Hi, my name is Gavin Lang. work over here in the Athletic Department at Oklahoma State. Just wanted to welcome you and thank you all for coming today. Give you a, just kind of a guidance here for what our program is going to be. What we're going to do is we're going to have uh, University President Burns Hargis come up and say a few words here in just a moment. Uh, after him will be Coach Mike Holder, the Athletic Director for Oklahoma State. Uh, and then on to Coach Mike Boynton. Uh, he will give an opening statement and then we'll open it up to questions. So the only questions here at the podium will be actually taken by Coach Boynton. After he finishes, we'll take Coach Boynton to the back of the room for the TV stations. Uh, and at that point, Coach Holder and President Hargis will be available for breakout sessions with members of the print media. Uh, and we'll go from there. We'll have photos taken in the back as well, portrait photos for Coach Boynton. So at this point, I will turn it over to President of Oklahoma State University, Mr. Burns Hargis. Thank you, Gavin. Thanks, everybody. Welcome to uh, a very exciting day here at Oklahoma State University. We're, I'm pleased to participate in this announcement of the new head basketball coach for Oklahoma State University, who will be introduced later. Uh, you know, we rekindled something really special uh, this last year, and I, I have every expectation that that, that excitement uh, is going to grow and be greater than ever. So uh, get your tickets now. Uh, I do want to welcome... Uh, Welcome the family, uh, Jenny and Zoe and Ace. Welcome, we're glad you're here. And I'd like to introduce the regents that we have here. First of all, our, our chair, uh, Lou Watkins is here. And, and uh, we've got Doug Burns. No relation, I wish we were, because he's, I think he's done real well. Uh, Calvin Anthony. And Rick Davis. We really appreciate you all being with us. And uh, actually, uh, Chair Watkins uh, appointed a committee to provide input into this process, and uh, uh, Doug, uh, Doug Burns chaired that committee. Calvin Anthony and Rick Davis both served on it, as did Joe Hall. So I want to thank the committee for for their, uh, their help in all of this. I also want to thank uh, Mike Holder, who worked very hard on this and did a great job, and with the valuable input of the committee, recommended to me that we hire Mike Boynton as our new head basketball coach, and I agreed with that decision heartily. So now I would like to turn it over to Mike Holder to introduce Mike Boynton. Great to see the players here, you know. At the end of the day, that's what it's all about. I look at you and I think about when uh, I was 17, year old, 17 years old and first showed up on those campus and never dreamed what was uh, gonna happen that day, much less any other day. And look back now and those are the best four years of my life. So wonderful to see you guys here. I got a lot of people to thank today. Before I get into this, I'd love to, uh, you know, we have great leadership at our university. We're so blessed. Great president, uh, transformational president. I've seen more happen on our campus in his tenure than any I can remember, and I've been here a long time, so I probably have a little bit of credibility. So thanks to Burns Hargis. I'd like to thank the regents for their support and not only what's happened the last week, uh, which was uh, critical and kind of crisis management, but uh, as long as I've been here, whether it be a golf coach or a athletic director, we got great leadership at this university. I'd also like to thank the fans. Uh, very, very passionate, trust me, I heard from them. Uh, my email box was full. And you know, you gotta have pretty th thick skin sometimes to open some of those emails, but I promise each and every one of you that felt uh, strongly enough to send me your thoughts, I read every one, I responded to every one. Uh, they may have been short responses because uh, I didn't have a lot of time, but I wanted you to know that I read every one of them and I appreciated the passion that you had. Positive or negative, doesn't matter. If you're going to build something special, you have to have a, a product or something that inspires uh, emotion. And we've got plenty of that in our fan base and that tells me we can go to great heights. Um, you know, one of those emails, I, I pretty late at night and I was reading through it and I thought, gee whiz, that was pretty tough. And I went back through there to see if I could find any kind of positive to come out of it. And the best I got was, you're a shriveled up old fossil. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
I quickly went to the bathroom and looked in the mirror. <laughs> and I know I'm getting on up there. I'd also like to thank the students. I'd like, you know, without the students, we don't have a job. This uh, university, uh, you're our lifeblood. You're what we get up for every day. And to see you back in the building, uh, that was very gratifying this year. You bring the energy. Uh, that's why everybody else comes in the building. Two things, players and students. That's what it's all about. I'd also like to thank Brad Underwood. Uh, Brad was only here a year. He did a lot of positive things. He ignited the passion in our fan base, got them back in the arena. Uh, I saw a transformation in a lot of our players, which is what a coach is supposed to do. Uh, other things too numerous to mention, but probably the greatest blessing of his one year was the people he brought with him and surrounded himself with. Uh, thank goodness he bought, brought three great assistant coaches in, and ultimately that gave us a great pool to look to internally. Uh, and I want to thank him for that. Very, very significant. Um, some of the people in the media uh, are in my email box, question our commitment to basketball because of what just transpired. And let me assure you that we've never wavered in our commitment to basketball or any sport at Oklahoma State University. Our commitment is if you're an athlete here or coach, we're gonna give you an opportunity to dream big win championships, make your dreams come true. As the athletic director, I owe that to every student, every student athlete, every coach. Basketball is no exception. So we had never wavered in that commitment. We never will. Uh, we got too much of a proud tradition, starting with Eddie, uh, with Mr. Iba, right through Eddie Sutton to today. A lot of great players, a lot of championships, two national championships, the first two back to back. So, uh, no, no one should ever question our commitment. Let's talk a little bit about Mike Boynton and what attracted us to him. Uh, first of all, I've seen it for a year. Uh, he's a loving son. When he talked about his parents in that uh, interview, that first one we did, uh, he couldn't help himself, broke down and cried. That's what you like to see. Same thing about his wife. Uh, I love to hear him talk about his son, uh, Ace and his daughter Zoe. Uh, I mean, you know, yeah, she's pretty enthusiastic about it too. Uh, she loves her father, obviously. But coaching is about family and creating that family atmosphere on your team. And when you see it reflected firsthand in, the, in your head coach, assistant coaches and their families, it makes you feel pretty good. Uh, what I'd ask from him is he loved his players like his sons, and I think we'll get that. Uh, he's a leader. He'll talk about that extensively. You know, it's one thing to talk the talk. It's another to walk the walk. Uh, I think he'll embody every single thing that he talks about, and he holds dear to his heart. Uh, I think he's a teacher. I think a lot of these players can attest to that. Jeff Carroll, uh, you got you benefited from that this year. Devon Dillard, everybody. Cameron McGriff, everybody benefited from that. And we're on a college campus. That's where teaching's supposed to happen. So uh, I feel that he's going to fit right in, and our basketball program will just be another course taught on the Oklahoma State uh, University campus. Um, I think he's going to change lives because of the man he is and what he stands for. I think he's going to teach kids or uh, to dream big and give them the skills to make those dreams come true. Uh, he embodies all the qualities that I hold dear in coaching. I think those qualities are timeless. They've never changed. I don't think they ever will. The game of basketball or football or any sport will evolve, but the principles that matter will be the same, time immemorial. And we started here with Ed Gallagher and right through uh, Mr. Iba, right through Eddie Sutton. And I see it every day today when I walk the halls of uh, our arena or over there in the West End Zone where the football coaches are. We're surrounded by greatness. We're surrounded by people that embody these qualities. And not just the coaching staffs, but to support people. Uh, it takes a, a village, you know, to create greatness, to raise a sign, to make a difference in the world. And we've got a great village here. Uh, we've got a new leader, a new sheriff in town. We are the Cowboys. So my message to you, and I know you're from Brooklyn, we're going to have to, I guess, learn how to ride a horse. Or put on a pair. That's right. That's, that's as far as I go. 
But I'd say it's uh, time to saddle up and ride for the brand and salute our new sheriff, Mike Boynt. <laughs> This is a um, this is a pretty unbelievable day in a lot of ways. At 35 years old, I really did think I would be a head coach. Had no idea I'd be the head coach at Oklahoma State University. Thank you. Thank you. Um, there's a lot of people that get credit for me standing here today. <clears throat> Dr. Hargis, Mr. Holder, who have given me this appointment, the board, thank you guys. The city of Brooklyn that raised me, all my friends I grew up with. My dad, my mom, my sisters, I didn't have a brother. Excuse me, but I've always had brothers. <laughs> Sorry, guys. This is about people. Okay. And real relationships. Trust. Respect. Hard work. It's all I know. That's it. We succeed together with your help. We support one another. We push each other to our goals. We challenge each other to be better. There's a great opportunity here today. And, and thanks to Brad. He's part of the reason this is happening. But it's about these guys. Every one of them. They know I care about them and I love them. They know that I'll push them as hard as I can to make them better. And they respect that about me. They let me coach them hard because they know I care. Ten at night, six in the morning, they can all call me for anything. And really, that's how we got here. That's what this is about. This is not about X's and O's, what plays I know. I know people. It's about building men. 18, 17 sometimes, to 23, 24, and making a difference somehow, positively in that time. We have a tremendous administration here. 
at Oklahoma State University. We get great support. I've gotten to know Mike Holder really well over the last week. He's not as bad as they say. <laughs> he really is a, a funny guy in a lot of ways. He almost makes me seem like there's a lot that we have in common, even though we're from really, really different parts of this world. We do share a lot of the same values, though, that it's about these guys, first and foremost. And that it's our job to help them achieve their goals, whatever they may be. Most of them want to play professional basketball, and we want them to do that. We got to help them understand what it takes to get there, and we have to provide them with the resources to make them better and get them there. Our staff is here for our players. Lamont Evans is somewhere in this room, and he could just as easily be standing right here. He's a brother that I never had, a great friend, a tremendous coach, and he will be standing here Monday. And I love him, he knows that. He will be staying with us as the associate head coach at Oklahoma State University. <laughs> Nobody understands what he's saying, but I got him. I got him. <laughs> That's my co-coach. I have a head coaching title that really I don't want to say it doesn't mean anything, because it does. It was a goal of mine. But that's not what this is about. Our players are here to get better and grow and develop, mature. Go from irresponsible, questionable decision making, immature, sometimes late, know it alls, to guys who really understand what life's about. And that's people. Not to respect people, not to work their tails off every day, no matter how it feels. Because some days you don't want to get out of bed. It's just that simple. You need to get out of bed and go to work. It's your responsibility. They need to learn that lesson. And they learn it here. That's our jobs. They need to do things that they don't necessarily feel comfortable with all the time. Because it's the right thing to do, not the easy one. That's our job to teach them that. They're also here to represent this university and the classroom first by showing up every day and doing their work. They know my expectations in the classroom, on the court, giving everything they have, putting on that jersey and having pride that it says Oklahoma State University on the front of it. But that's a privilege, not a right. That there are several players for generations that paved the way for him. Reeves, Rutherford, Mason, Graham, Smart, Forte. Those guys gave blood, sweat, and tears for them to continue to be able to do what they want to do. It's a big deal. It's a big responsibility. It's our job as a staff to convey that message to them every day. Let them know that they walk with pride. They play with passion and pride. They give everything they have every single time they step on the court because it means something to put that jersey on and represent Cowboy Nation. Our players are here to be ambassadors for this university, to go out in the community and represent it in a positive light when they're in the community, to give other people hope that it doesn't matter where you come from, how tall or short you are, how you look, you have an opportunity here at Oklahoma State. People care about each other here. They know they'll be held accountable in every facet of their lives here, socially, academically, and athletically. The message to our fans is simple. This ain't about me. 
It's about them. The players need your support. I'm going to be okay. I'm going to be fine. I'm going to work my tail off like I always have my entire life. And I'll figure this thing out as we go. Not that I don't know what I'm doing already. But I've never called a time out of the game. I'll figure out when it's a good time to do that. I'll get that right. All right? But our players need the support of our fans and our alums and our boosters. That's who's going. That's who they're coming here to They're not coming here to support me. They need to come support these young men who are given every single thing they have every day to represent them so that they can go back to wherever they work and live with pride that they went to this university or they donated something to this university. We can only do this thing one way. Together. That's it. Everybody. One accord. Pull in the same direction with each other. Fans, the team, alumni, boosters, administrators. We're going to get this thing done. We're going to win big because winning big is an expectation at Oklahoma State University. I told our players this last night, we had a good season. I'm no fan of good. Got no interest in it. I want to be playing this weekend. I want to be great. I want to be nationally relevant because we can. We have. And we can again and we will again. Been to the Final Fours, won national championships, have great have have had great players, guys who played in NBA. We'll do all those things again. But we can only do it together. We will, all of us together, get this thing done. And like I told our guys, let's work. Let's work. I'll take any questions from Uh, Cliff Brown, Associated Press. If you could talk more specifically about the influence of two men, Brad Underwood and then also Frank Martin. Yeah, um, you know, ironically, I met both. Well, I met I met Brad, who I worked for the last four years through Frank. Um, I'd known Frank, and Frank came into South Carolina in 2012. I was on the staff that they replaced, and I learned a lot about Frank because he didn't owe me anything. But he gave me an opportunity to stay on this program because he cared about me and my family. Subsequently, I got to know Brad by being around the program that year. And we shared a lot of conversations about different things. Obviously, I knew a lot about the area, which he was kind of new to from a recruiting standpoint or basketball philosophy. And um, when he got his opportunity to be head coach the following spring, well, I, I assume one of the first calls he made was to me to ask me if I would be his head coach. And I won't go into too much detail about it, but I didn't know where Stephen F. Austin was until I got home and, and explained to my wife that we were going to Texas and we looked on a map and didn't find it in Austin, Texas. <laughs> so, um, you know, Brad and I developed a great working relationship. He's a really good friend and uh, certainly wish him the best at his next destination. opportunity at this age when you, you know, yeah, I mean, again I I've always wanted to coach I've, I've always thought I've had ideas of being the youngest head coach in the country I didn't never think about coaching at Oklahoma State at 35 I just didn't it just wasn't something that was in my mind uh, just being honest um, but I have familiarity with this university first starting in 1995 I'm sitting in my living room as a 13 year old and not every game was on television and not everything was covered 24 seven. So you had literally, you had breaking news and they go to the um, final four scene and they talk about this guy that broke a backboard 
at the practice at the Final Four. It was a big deal. I mean, I, I heard about it in Brooklyn. And it was a big country. It was my first time really hearing about Oklahoma State basketball. And again, uh, move forward. In 2004, when I was a senior in college, my uh, team played an NCAA tournament. And we played in Kansas City, the same place that Oklahoma State played. And so I've always kind of had an idea of what the school was about, um, that it was a nationally relevant program and had a lot of success. Um, but I don't think about my age when, it's, when it comes to this thing. I've worked really hard, and that's all I really think about on a daily basis. Every day I wake up, I think about, am I going to give everything I have in every way I possibly can? And my message to our guys is to do the same thing. If you do that, you respect people, you treat people the right way. I'm a walk and live an example of eventually, and you don't know when or how, it'll, it'll work out for you. Uh, you that your greatest asset that convinced the OSU administration to buy into you? Uh, I don't know. And, and I'm going to say it's my wife's going to laugh because I'm, a, um, I'm not sure she's ever seen me cry before. I'm not really that a, a much of an emotional person like that. I don't know where that came from, to be honest. Uh, and I do apologize. <laughs> um, I was just overwhelmed a little bit, but I think what, what it is is just genuine. I, I, I'm just a normal, genuine person who, who is authentic and cares about other people. And I think they thought that this team, this program needed that. Um, I don't know if I'm any better of a coach than any of the other candidates. I don't know that. I, again, I, I truly believe in my heart. Lamont Evans could be standing up here as qualified as I am right now. And I'm so glad he's staying along. Um, but just I'm committed to doing things the right way and to caring about these guys on a daily basis. Mike, you mentioned the line. You sort of speak to why, why it's so important to have him back at the end. I don't even know where to start. Um, we share a lot of the same values. He's an unbelievable hard worker. That's key. He's tremendously loyal. He's smart. He knows basketball. <laughs> kind of matters. Um, and, and for us, it's about relationships. Um, and to have the opportunity and my first head coaching job to have somebody who I'm so aligned with from a philosophical standpoint gives me great comfort. And I cannot thank him enough. You mentioned Lamont. What's your timetable on other assistant coaches? Or do you have any you're ready to announce at this stage as well as Lamont? I don't have any others that I'm ready to announce. And I don't necessarily have a timetable. Um, I want to hire the best staff I possibly can. It's not about me. These guys will be co-coaches. Again, I... They, they get to call me head coach. I wish they wouldn't. Lamont's every bit of head coach as I am. And the guys that I'm going to try to hire will be as qualified um, as, as either one of us. I just want to surround our guys with the best people possible to help them achieve their goals so that we collectively can do the things that we're going to set as goals for our program and our team. Coach, what about the fact that you already have those established with these players, just how important is that as a foundation in terms of moving forward? Yeah, I think it's um, it's better than not having those relationships. Um, but I think that the real key is that the guys actually believe in me, you know, and, and part of that is because they know I'm invested in them as people first. Um, that'll give us a great place to start. I know a lot of their strengths and most of their weaknesses, right, Devon? <laughs> and so we're going to be able to hit the ground running a little bit quicker than maybe someone coming in from the outside who don't know these guys, and that'll be an advantage. Mike, I know Coach Holder mentioned your family earlier. Would you like to give them maybe a special introduction to everybody here? 
uh, Zoe's been introducing herself all day, so. <laughs> Zoe, can you wave? Ace, Zoe's one and Ace is four and, and my wife who is. <laughs> I don't know how, I don't know. Again, it's just like being a coach at Oklahoma State right here. She's smarter than I am. She's a better athlete than I am. And I'm not even going to talk about how much better looking. <laughs> so I'm winning. I mean, it, I'm fortunate. And, and I'm very appreciative of their support uh, through everything. Because just as to how glorious today is, we've also sat in places at home and wondering, I wonder where we're going to work here in a couple of months. You know, we've, we've been through a lot. I mean, obviously, our children are um, are always there with us. <laughs> so it, it's tremendous to have her and, and them with, with me. I know it's probably a little early to think about next year's schedule. This was done before you were named coach, but it seems a little bit coincidental, ironic. The team will play in Brooklyn next year. Well, I heard that. Uh, couple months back, I don't know when we announced it. I was really excited about it. And I will tell you that since Friday, when I got offered the job and accepted it, I haven't thought one second about scheduling. <laughs> and I probably should, but these players and our recruits, our former players, um, our, our priorities, our priorities over those things right now. What kind of basketball team do you see under Mike Wood? Uh, the foundation of our program would be hard, tough, man-to-man -to -man defense. Everything else will be built off of that. Um, and if, if you can't figure it out defensively, you're going to have a hard time playing. So that, that'll be where we start. You know, offense will figure out depending on our talent each year and what different guys are capable of doing. Fully expect to be able to score a lot of points because we'll be able to recruit really talented guys here. Um, but, but we'll be about defense. We'll be about defense. I have not. Um, I got a text message from him on Friday congratulating me, and I sent him a text saying thanks. And that's been the extent of our interaction. There's always a thought, you know. Um, I worked with him for four years. And so I, I guess naturally you start thinking, I may not be coaching here. So I've got to make sure that they, they're OK. Um, but it, it never never materialized, and I'm, I'm, I'm thankful for it. You have several other head coaches from OSU here. How much are you going to rely on them early on? Do you expect some of them to occur in similar situations as the first head coach job here? Yeah, um, um, those guys can be invaluable to me. And, and, and several of them are in season already and now. Um, but, but the type of people they are, they've all reached out to me. And unfortunately, when you're an assistant coach, you usually don't have the head coaches in the other sports phone numbers. Um, so I'm getting a lot of text messages. And as I kind of get through it, I get to a message. I'm like, oh, man, coach so-and-so texted me. And it's been two days. And I haven't even thought about getting back to him. Um, and I do apologize, guys. Uh, but those guys can be a tremendous asset to me here. And I certainly look forward to working with them and, and visiting with them soon. Um, I'm a huge, huge baseball fan. Uh, if anybody knows me, knows I'm, I grew up a huge Yankee fan being in Brooklyn. Uh, so Coach Holiday and I exchanged messages, I think it was yesterday, and, and hope that we can go cheer on Matt together one day soon. Um, and certainly want to support all the other sports and, and coaches here. Things that you're going to have to learn in a hurry to hit the ground running? It's a good question. This we'll find out as they come up a little bit, right? Um, my main priority is making sure that our players know what the expectations are and then make sure we hit the road recruiting because you know, now is time is of the essence. Um, 
and then we'll figure out those other things as we go along. I don't know if I could pinpoint one specifically. Um, it's never been done before, so man, that that's awesome. I love watching them have success, and again, Frank Martin is a man that I have tremendous respect for as a person uh, beyond being a basketball coach. So um, I certainly hope they do really well. Um, my main focus is on this job and going out and making sure our players are comfortable where we are and then going and getting good players so that one day we're playing. We're playing this coming weekend. Thank you. Thank you.